They were playing football, but it was not inter intercollegiate. They were playing games on campus. You know, the, the sophomore class would uh, challenge the freshmen or whatever you like that. And that's how the game was played on college campuses at that, at that time. That was until 1869, when William Leggett, the Rutgers captain, challenged Princeton captain William Gummier to a game. The teams met on November 6th in New Brunswick, near the site of the current College Avenue Gymnasium, and organized college football was born. The preliminary arrangements for the game provided that there should be 25 on each side. That three games should be played. The first at uh, New Brunswick, the second at Princeton, and the third at the place to be agreed upon. In addition to being played 25 on 25, that first game more closely resembled soccer. The objective of the game, to kick the ball into the opponent's goal. These rules provided, among other things, that there should be no free kicks and no catching or holding of the ball. You were not allowed to advance the ball, you're not allowed to run with the ball, and um, I think you were allowed to bat it, perhaps. So it, it, it certainly did not resemble anything like we would consider football to be today. If you would see it, uh, you'd say, well, that's a soccer game, not a football game. The first team to record six goals was the winner. Rutgers prevailed 6-4, to four, although Princeton, at the time known as the College of New Jersey, would win the return match eight goals to zero a week later. The third agreed-upon game was never played that year. Gummier, the Princeton captain, would go on to become Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of New Jersey. One of the other standouts on that first Princeton team was junior Jacob Michael, better known as Big Mike. Standing six foot, 215 pounds, he was a behemoth for the time. And according to journalist and Princeton graduate Mark Bernstein, at one point in the game, Big Mike and a Rutgers player crashed through the split rail fence, toppling some of the spectators. Princeton and Rutgers laid the foundation for organized college football on that November afternoon in 1869. In 1870, Columbia would field the team, and within a few years, most of the colleges and universities in the East were competing in the sport. I little thought when I played in that game at the age of 16 that it was destined to become the most popular game in the world, that great stadiums would be built to accommodate an army of spectators. 